Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Two Peas in a Pod. Today is Wednesday, June 2nd, and this is the eighth episode of our podcast. I think eighth, right? Yeah, I think eighth. (laughs) If you're new to our podcast, my name is Ivy. And my name is Sophie, and we are sisters who aim to start conversations about important issues around the world. As always, we're going to start off today's episode by re- giving a review of a book that we both read recently. For once, yeah. <laughs> In honor of National Indigenous History Month, we're going to be discussing the winning novel by Richard Wagamese, Indian Horse. Okay, so if you haven't already read this novel yet, it's about Indigenous child's youth, Saul Indian Horse, who's a victim of the residential school system. He later uses his passion for hockey to cope with trauma he sort of experienced at the school, Um, Residential schools were open for a century um, in Canada, sorry, over a century actually, and they were aimed at depriving Indigenous children from their culture and converting them to fit the Eurocentric standards. So obviously not a lot of good things um, happening right now and not something to be proud of as a country that, you know, is so focused on multiculturalism these days. So, you know, speaking English and following Christianity um, was kind of the theme. Um, So let me ask you something. Do you think this novel raised awareness of Indigenous oppression? Yeah, I definitely think it did. Mm -hmm. Indian Horse depicts the reality of the mistreatment that the Native population of Canada had to experience. Uh, Especially as Saul lost touch with his family and his culture, you know, he was kind of ripped away from his grandmother's arms. Um, I was able to feel a part of his suffering to an extent. I think Richard Wagamese effectively used a lot of pathos in his writing um, to enlighten readers on the dark reality that so many of us choose to ignore. I also believe that there's no better way than to become educated than to learn from a Native American's perspective and also through such an interesting storyline. Yeah, you know what? I agree with that. Like, I think when I read the novel specifically, it just really hit me um, how important it is that Canadians really become educated on this topic it's weird because I remember like taking grade 10 history which is mandatory um you know back when I was in high school we barely touched on residential schools I I know there's just so much to learn um so much to educate all these high schoolers on that might not have any idea what this dark past is but now that I've read Indian Horse I feel like I know so much more and that's kind of the power of books and that's why we love reading so much Yeah, I completely agree. I think that residential schools are such a particular case of oppression. I think it's really hard to truly understand exactly what the Indigenous community had to go through. But I think reading Indian Horse just opened a window to me and I'm sure to you as well, because it gave us an opportunity to feel empathy rather than just sympathy for the Indigenous population. Right. Um... You know, before doing something about the issue, we really have to learn about the issue. That always comes first. Um, And by gaining a deeper understanding of the history of Indigenous people, we also really gain a level of respect for their culture, which once again is the utmost important thing. Um, It really saddens me to see how residential schools still affect the Indigenous population still. Like before, I only thought that it was something of the past, but I've recently realized how much it still affects them. So the last residential school in Canada closed in 1996, which is actually exactly 25 years ago. And much of the uh, Indigenous population today um, can't speak their native language or experience their own culture because it was lost in those residential schools um, from their parents or their grandparents or even their great-grandparents. Yeah, I mean, kind of making a personal connection, like 1996 is not that long ago, you know? It's like, yeah. like when you think about it, you would think that, oh, you know, we're in such a better place right now. We must have eradicated all of the racism and oppression. But no, like 25 years ago, like obviously the effect is still going to echo today and it's still going to impact, as you said, a lot of the young children. So I 100% agree with you. Um, I think it's so great that this conversation is finally starting to rise up in society. Um, but sometimes on social media, I still see racist comments and I'm like, come on, it's it's 2021. You know, we got to do better than that as a country. Yeah, I completely agree. 
Okay, so do you recommend this novel to our listeners? Yes, of course I would, absolutely. I would too. I think the story is so fascinating and so emotional, especially since it's National Indigenous History Month. I think it's a perfect time for all of our listeners to learn more about residential schools and the history of Indigenous people. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so I guess I, we're running tight on time as I see, so that definitely just wraps up this last segment of our podcast. Um, so thank you guys so much for listening. Um, and now we're going to take a quick intermission.